look closely at the present you are constructing and this is a pun intended look closely at the present you are constructing it should look like the future you are dreaming this must have been your thoughts mr hiranandani when you got into the real estate business there is so much we want to hear from you and hence without any further ado let's hear it from the man himself the czar of real estate ca niranjan hiranandani let's start at the beginning sir your father was such a renowned doctor and you also belonged to a family of doctors was there no temptation to pursue medicine what made you choose this wonderful profession called the chartered accountant uh, a very good morning to you uh, thank you very much i'm so happy to be amongst the fellow chartered accountants uh, people in the profession and others uh, i'm really grateful to all of you uh, mr satish roy mr mudusa kachwala mr manish kadia uh, miss uh, madam uh, preeti savla and all the others who are present here today thank you very much for joining us uh, here for this uh, interview that you are having well uh, i come from a very illustrious uh, medical family my father was a ent specialist dhanvantri a padma bhushan and was a very renowned doctor and my elder brother was also a doctor my elder bhabhi was also a doctor and hence there was nothing else except medical people around my house so i knew more words about uh, uh, the medical words in terms of uh, surgical and others than i would probably talk about business and business was hardly discussed on the breakfast tables and others but i think uh, right from the beginning i was quite scared of the amount of huge effort put in my by father in terms of work schedules and commitments and others to his profession and also my elder brother that it scared me i thought that you know can i ever work so hard as my father and my elder brother are doing that's not a profession for me it requires a lot of commitment and hard work and i felt you know that i was not fit for that so i took as a default i took up commerce in uh, sydenham college and then became a bcom in the institute and uh, but uh, as you are right so it was really a kind of uh, a default uh, career that i first chose simply because i thought that i couldn't be a good doctor or as good a doctor as my father and elder brother were so that's that's one of the reasons why i took the bcom course there's a second story to take a chartered accountant course and uh, uh, i finished my bcom and i had decided that i would get into the world of business not wanting to again do a professional career in chartered accountancy but my father took me to a friend of his his name was nani palkiwala another very illustrious uh, legal profession in a building of bombay house he was a director of tatas and uh, used to sit in bombay house so he took me to him and we had a kind of interaction after my bcom results and mr Uh, nani palkiwal asked me uh, my boy uh, niranjan uh, what do you want to do so he said uh, i said i want to do business so he said oh but uh, what is your you know what is your qualification so i said i've done my bcom and i had gone to two of the factories of uh, century mills and others to work with during my vacation and i want to now get into the world of business so he said how oh, how did you do in your bcom thinking that uh, you know i must have done badly so i told him i stood second in the university of mumbai in bcom and he said oh you did uh, then you must do chartered accountancy and this was a bolt from the blue but between my father and mr nani palkiwala they decided that i must do chartered accountancy and hence uh, i actually uh, did my chartered accountancy sheer respect for mr palkiwala and my father's uh, needs at that time in terms of what they wanted me to do and i did it so i was looking at the world of business even when i was doing my ca uh, to do it so long story to say that uh, kind of a thing egged on at the last moment by people who were well meaning and wanting to think good of me you know but that's how it came about very true so uh, to believe in something in which everyone believes is called belief but to believe in something 
in which others can't believe is confidence and you really demonstrated all of that let let me now turn to your uh, to the life at uh, the house of hiranandani to all of us hiranandani communities has really transformed the real estate space what are a couple of things that really uh, you are really proud of about your group oh i uh, well we are very proud of a lot of things but the biggest thing that we are proud of is that uh, our commitment to the customer and uh, that has been the most supreme uh, uh, i think uh, factor which we really cherish uh, that every customer really uh, must get joy in whatever they do in dealing with us working with us getting our product of the real estate in business with mamas so the end is good so that's one direction in which we took the second of course is the fact that uh, uh in the real estate profession at the time when I, uh, when i got into it it was a underworld story it was more like a haji mastan and a yusuf fatel going into it and i saw the divergence in terms of respect which uh, a rich builder would get and a comparatively poorer doctor would get my father was immensely respected immensely immensely respected by one and all right from the smallest of small persons to the biggest billionaires and uh, millionaires in those days and they all respected my father for his profession and i realized that businessman was not being respected at all and certainly not the builders of those days so one of the things which was always underlying in my mind was the fact that uh, you know uh, i've gone into a pro, into a industry where i will never get respect so it was always underlying why we are the builders not getting respect and i realized that uh, basically they were dishonest a b they had no commitment to the quality of goods that were produced and c uh, there were no ethical values now all those things were there in the back of my mind but i was a struggling developer so obviously in the beginning part of my career i couldn't really contribute much in terms of changing the situation for the industry or the uh, you know the, the businessmen who were the builders but over a period of time i think we made it very clear that uh, we wanted to be ethical we wanted to bring value proposition we wanted to do quality goods uh we would be uh, transaction wise we would uh, you know try to do our level best and of course uh over a period of time we were able to build uh that type of uh, what should i say respect for the industry as compared to what uh, was there earlier on and uh, so it 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 was a story of working towards those aspects of it one of the backgrounds i could give you is that uh, when we started powai i was always thinking you know that uh, what should be the benchmark of what we did now in my youth i was brought up in malabar hill my father and we all stayed there south mumbai uh, we i studied in campion then sydenham college and so on and so forth and i lived in a, a posh locality so when we built powai it was beyond and under you know very far away and uh, whatever developers were there very few of them but um, not making very good buildings so one of the thoughts was that i would make a project where the buildings would be better than the buildings in malabar hill the garden would be better than hanging garden and priyadarshini park and uh, the school that i built in powai should hiranandani foundation school should be better than campion school by alma mater and the colleges and other institutions and hospitals uh, should be better than the hospitals my father went to which was bridge candy just lok bombay hospital in south mumbai so there was an aspiration model that the minimum benchmark was pretty high because you know south mumbai at that time had the cream of society over there and all the benchmarks of uh, what i was able to get was there hence uh, the benchmarking was pretty high in those days 
and of course uh, power is as it is there's a lot of stories into that but in short let me tell you that we benchmark the better the best of bestest and uh, saw to it that we would do it and of course ethical values were separate uh, when we deal with our clients customers etc we believe in the ethical values and that hold, holds us even today in good stead in terms of the activities that we do absolutely i think uh, i'll just summarize what you said in one one sentence don't count the things you do but do the things that count and you've really set such high benchmarks for yourself and not only set it but also demonstrated this uh, in in great measure i think most of us are the beneficiaries of what you and your group has done i personally is a is a is a very fond uh, and honored uh, customer of uh, the hiranandani group so we have seen the hiranandani group uh, grow exponentially over the years and as you correctly mentioned the hiranandani gardens at powai mumbai being the best display of your magnificence where is the company today versus what you thought it it was or what you thought it to be 5 years ago ah uh, well uh, every 5 years every 10 years uh, there is a paradigm which happens there are changes that happen uh, and uh, the markets change the the regulatory regulations change all these aspects of it are taking place so the several changes have taken place in the last 5 to 7 to 10 years one of the major changes which really took up was uh, the fact that new regulations have come into place like rera uh, in terms of uh, doing it we have got the ibc code which is there and uh, we had the disaster of ilfs and all that so the entire structuring of uh, financing and uh, working in terms of it have completely changed that's one aspect of it the second aspect of it is that the company as a group has diversified simply because uh, my son decided that uh, you know at 71 uh, uh, he didn't want to take over from me because he thought that i was still active and uh, you know healthy enough to continue to work in the real estate business so he wanted to do newer things though he is very good at real estate and has built the second tallest uh, residential tower in the world the 23 marina in dubai uh, but you know so he diversified the group into uh, data centers into uh, in the uh, industrial and warehousing uh, platform with a 50 50 partnership with blackstone and also took up what is called h energy which is putting pipelines and lng terminal in uh, western maharashtra uh, where on the coastal maharashtra which uh, which will be pipeline so a big diversification in three new directions have taken place in the past 7 years in terms of it partly because of uh, what my son got into it and all we of course in the real estate side continue to do uh, uh, townships we also do uh, uh, various items in terms of uh, uh, commercial it uh, retail schools colleges and others of course are the csr work that we do so by and large continue to grow uh, the real estate business into newer and newer townships which we are adding in panvel in chennai in uh, kandala in alibag now and uh, we've done the international financial center for the prime minister in uh, gandhi nagar so we did that in the last 5 years and uh, lots of other real estate projects but by and large we love the township model much more because we are, it gives us greater satisfaction and we are able to uh, give much more back to society true excellence is not a skill it is an attitude uh, just one last uh, thought on this uh, marketing is essential even for the best quality product you demonstrated quality in construction your group is known for the high quality community living as you just mentioned just now which is displayed in each of the projects that you have been part of just please tell us what part of your learnings as a chartered accountant have helped you in the different faces uh, different facets of your job as a chartered accountant the first thing i think most important is uh, 
discipline and uh, a, a sense of going into the depths of matters. I think a chartered accountant really goes deep into matters, uh, has a sense of discipline in working towards an end objective. I think all that, whether it's a deadline of a balance sheet or it's a commitment to completion or it's a reporting, I think each aspect of uh, being a chartered accountant sets you off in terms of the discipline that you really do in each. Discipline not only in the accounting side or the auditing side or the financial side, but also discipline in terms of the work that you do for construction, planning norms, uh, uh, working on schedules and stuff like that and seeing to it that all the norms are done. More and most important is the fact that you are able to envision the entire gamut of activity ending in, the, in, in terms of how the business of business works. And uh, of course, the financial part of it also has become more important as you must have seen in the last couple of years because of changes in the financial fiscal system, the Real Estate Regulatory Act, the escrowing of uh, monies in terms of the projects, all this a chartered accountant can really pick up much better than anybody else. So, and I find easy to understand uh, the projects and the financial viability of the projects that we need to do. So I think a professional thing is there. But, you know, if you don't keep up with the times in terms of study, in terms of learning, then you can become out of date very, very quickly. So one of the best things that the Institute of Chartered Accountants has done is the continuing learning teaching that takes place between the in the profession where you have communication to all the, the, the practicing chartered accountants and others uh, to share with them data information and knowledge that really works our way. I think that is most important of all. Very beautifully summarized what uh, a chartered accountant is all about and what are the skills and what are the uh, what are the wonderful things that the chartered accountant can bring to the table. Uh, let me turn on to now Mr. Niranjan Hiranandani as a person. A day will never be any more than what you make of it. A day will never be any more than what you make of it. You are involved in so many activities your own construction, you hold so many positions across uh, different org organizations. What does a typical day look like for you? And what kind of a person are you outside office? <laughs> well, uh, you're right. Uh, there are different facets of me. So let me just, uh, in short, give you the two other facets that you've talked about in short. Uh, so the real estate and the business of business is one. The second part of it is uh, the work that I do in terms of CSR activity, which is large. Uh, I run 14 colleges in Mumbai. I run six schools. I run two hospitals. I'm a trustee of three temples, including Bapulnath and Shinachi. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, CSR activity, which we have been doing for the last 25, 30 years. So all this is a very important part of my life. And last year, the government of Maharashtra has given me a separate university uh, connected with HR and KC colleges. And I've also started a school of real estate, which is an MBA program in real estate, which we have wow. started this year. So all this is the second part of me. Uh, the third part of me is the fact that I have created associations uh, throughout my life. The Ma created the Maharashtra Chamber of Housing Industry, then worked towards Gridai, and now I'm heading NARETCO, the National Real Estate Development Council under the AGs of the Housing Ministry. This has become, had, has been a very, very important part of my life too, because I've worked on policies with the centre government, with the state governments. I was part of the slum rehabilitation policy for the state of Maharashtra, the first national housing policy of India at the central government. I was the first CCA appointment in government of India as director Hatko, and now appointed by the Supreme Court to try and sort out the Unitech problem in, uh, in Hudgurgaon and Delhi in terms of 35,000 undelivered apartments. I'm director on the Unitech board nominated by the Supreme Court. 
So all in all, uh, this is the other part of me which I uh, really do. And uh, so I'm very passionate about all the three, policy making and others. I'm also uh, on the Committee of Education with the government of Maharashtra for the National Education Policy Incorporation, along with my chairman, Dr. Mashilka, uh, over there in that committee. So this is the third part of me. And uh, so I run three different aspects of my life, and I'm joyous uh, in all the three. I enjoy each part of it, and it's a great lot of fun that I do. Uh, but I love it all. So, so when people tell me, you know, you're spending time in this and not in this, it's unfortunate that I love this and this and that. So uh, I'm trying to make most of it. And uh, so it's a packed day usually uh, to see that all aspects of it are really do it because I'm enjoying all the three. And it really shows uh, Mr. Hiranandani that uh, you're really enjoying each one of them. Let me ask you a little ticklish question. If I were to randomly ask a couple of employees of your company, what do you think I will hear them saying? is your management style. I delegate, I trust, I empower, uh, I accept mistakes uh, if they are genuinely done. Uh, I think they, uh, I'm easily accessible. So uh, when they have problems, they're able to communicate with me with, through various means and be able to solve them. And uh, I'm helpful to them in terms of the direction in which they will do. But I expect them to actually uh, execute and be committed to the entire goals of the company. And that's, an, that's a given that you have to do what you have to do in terms of work. But barring that, I'm pretty liberal with my people in terms of giving them to work in their style of working. So many of my number twos have their own style of working and many of them are there with me for a long time. So my out of the six or seven senior people, the average lifespan with me has been 30 years plus. Oh. So yeah, so they've grown old with me, that kind of thing. So why not? <laughs> part why, of not why not? And why not? Yeah. Absolutely. There's, there's uh, a lot of Bohemi in the company as a family, an extended family, they consider themselves an extension of Hiranandani family. Wow. Very, very, very good. Let me turn on to your, uh, uh, to some, some answers on your leadership. Uh, given your personal experience, what is it that we chartered accountants need to do to become a CEO? I mean, well, uh, I think, uh, if you can go beyond just the accounting ideas and thoughts and look at the vision of the company, the direction of the economy, where exactly we are going to do and be able to marry various requirements of stakeholders, whether the equity holders, the managers or the customers and the clients of the company and to rise above just numbers crunching. I think a lot of difference will be there. So if you see the CEO of uh, uh, TCS is a chart accountant. So uh, there's a major, uh, major growth company in technology. So would you have thought that the CEO of TCS would be a chartered accountant and not a technology tech guy? Uh, he's a chartered accountant. So there is no reason why the biggest of biggest growth companies in India or one of the biggest growth country, uh, companies in India with a huge growth of market cap in the last couple of years and internationally driven is uh, headed by a chartered account. That's very good. Very, very right. Uh, just uh, I take a break because I just want to tell uh, all our viewers to please post in the questions that you have on the chat box or on the Q&A. And uh, we'll be happy to take them in the next 10 minutes or so. Uh, we'll keep 10 or 15 minutes for the questions, depending on what type of questions that come. And we look forward to the questions uh, as they come in. Uh, one more thing on the leadership, uh, Mr. Hiranandani. Today, the world is looking out for great leaders and progressive organizations are known.
to nurture such leaders. For budding professionals in the audience, can you please elaborate on a few characteristics that you believe every leader should possess? Is there any specific advice you would like to leave with us for someone going into a leadership position for the first time? Integrity, honesty, commitment, wow. uh, hard work, resilience, adaptability, empathy, honesty. Uh, I think all aspects of life which encompass uh, uh, a good person uh, would be a person who would be a good leader. But a good leader should also delegate. A good leader should also complement. A good leader must share the the, 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 the victory and uh, give them an idea that they are the ones also participating in the success of the organization and of the direction in which it is there. And also, I think uh, you need to know how to carry on. You've got to be reading. You've got to have your uh, uh, feet on the ground, not in the sky. And you need to also be able to be willing to learn as well as teach. Uh, the person who stops learning will lose his leadership very soon. And, uh, a, leadership, and a leader can never be uh, arrogant and continue to be a leader for long because he will not be willing to accept changes that are required because leadership also requires changes from time to time in terms of the actions to be taken. So unless you're constantly got your ear to the ground and willing to hear, read, understand, you will not be able to change with the times and move with the wind that is flowing. So a good leader needs a lot of it, but nobody has everything. So what you really do is if you don't have certain attributes or qualities or skill set, you get good people around you to actually help you to cover those uh, aspects of it, which you don't have. And a, a good leader could easily do that. I think integrity is the most valuable and respected quality of leadership. Always keep your word. Be sure that we are going to remember all these attributes, I think, to make a person completely round, uh, rounded. Uh, let me come now to the, uh, to the profession and the real estate uh, uh, business. How do you see the real estate uh, shaping up in India? And can you suggest of some novel areas of practice for chartered accountants in this field, if there are any? So uh, the real estate as a business is definitely going to grow. Uh, those lots and lots of changes are going to happen in the next couple of years, as you must have seen. Uh, one of the untapped sections are the affordable housing section. A huge amount of scope is available there in the future for the purposes of growth in that sector, which is quite untapped as compared to the other sectors of real estate has taken place. But uh, uh, a large amount of it also depends on the infrastructure to be created. So, for example, in townships, we do a lot of internal infrastructure while government can only do the external infrastructure. So there's a lot of scope which is going to be there in the real estate as a business uh, which is going to be uh, in the next couple of years. For a chartered accountant, of course, there's a lot of work in terms of the real estate business, accounting and finance and financial accounting is there. But today, mergers, acquisitions, taking over of projects, structuring projects, uh, doing joint development agreements which are required to be done. There's a lot of tax issues, GST issues which are there because of the complexity of GST in terms of joint development and other development agreements that are there. Also, the fact that a lot of certification is required to be done under RERA for, uh, for certifications for the real estate as a company, and also general guidance on how to handle debt, how to handle equity, where in which type of projects would it make sense to pick up debt, pick up equity, pick up various other things in order to do it. So chartered accountant is the huge uh, arena of activity available in the real estate field. And uh, and also now, as I told you, that uh, uh, there is a lot of opportunity in terms of learning of the newer things which are happening. So for example, uh, the REITs have come in, INVITs have come in, all these didn't exist 10 years ago. 
So all that uh, has to be understood. Where does the opportunities lie? What about the investment side? Who are the people who will bring in the monies into it? What are the various ways of uh, working financial uh, closures in terms of projects? Uh, how do you do debt? How do you structure various items of the whole thing? And how to actually do a, a final budgeting and program? So chart and count is useful in lots and lots of things into all these aspects. I think this is going to be a very, very valuable uh, input for all uh, chartered accountants who are who are practicing. Uh, let me turn around to the social sector. Uh, it is rightly said that we make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. Can you please brief, brief us on the work done by the group on the social sector? We'll take one hour, but I'll try to be brief. Uh, uh, my style 22 years ago, 25 years ago, uh, my father mentioned to me about putting up a school when I make money. And within 12 months of that, we put up the school. I had not yet made money, but uh, we still put up a first school in Pawai. And uh, later on, we did another one in, uh, in Thane. Uh, later on, got into the lines of education and others. And today, as I told you, uh, I have 14 colleges in Mumbai, six schools, two hospitals, a university. All that is in terms of the activity, which is uh, really contribution to give back to society in various ways. Each one is got targets to be growing in order to service more to society. And we it, none of these activities at the present time is for profit. It's all not for profit. So we don't collect a single NP in capitation fee. We don't do any other things in terms of any other negative activity. I pay my bills in my own hospital in order to make it, uh, you know, uh, clear in terms of how it works. And uh, all in all that we do is, uh, I, why, why are you surprised? It's a good precedent to do so that okay. in future generations will also do it. But uh, having said that, all these activities, I'm also a trustee of three temples. We've done a building for Shinachi Temple in Nathadwara. So all these activities we continue to do. And this is a very, very important part of my life. So we continue to grow the education field, try to do an outreach centers in each one of this. We now run skill development for the poorest of four. Last year, we couldn't do much, but year before last, we skilled 5,000 poorest of poor in improving uh, skilling that we have and uh, free of charge totally. Uh, uh, and we work on that part of it also. So that's a very, very, very important part. Our hospital continues to improve. We are now looking at uh, transplants. We are looking at uh, uh, doing LDAD, a substitute for heart lung. Uh, we are uh, we looked after 5,000 COVID uh, inpatients. We did thousands of vaccinations, thousands of outpatients who looked after COVID in uh, in the hospitals that we run. So all these aspects of it continue to grow and continue to service the end customers. We vaccinate about four to five hundred uh, people a day extra over and above the construction workers. So all these activity continues to grow from time to time over a period of the last 30 years. And uh, hopefully uh, this will continue to service society in a direct and indirect manner that we want to do and upgrade the quality of life of people and students and education and others. So uh, just this, two more questions and then we take the questions from the audience. I have, uh, we have a lot of students and very young chartered accountants in, our, in, in, in the audience today. So the students between the age of 20 and 25 uh, would be completing their studies in a rather hazy environment and a little unsure of what the future holds for them. What will be your advice to them? Future is great. And it's what you said. It's what you make out of it. Uh, it's no use living a life. It is making a life. So you have to make your life and see to it what you make out of it. But I do believe that the time of 
birth and the time time of death is fixed by God and you are able to do a lot in between. So it is up to you to uh, extract the best out of this time, whether you're young or you're old. I don't think that makes a lot of difference. In fact, the younger you are, the more aspirational, the more hard work, the more commitment, the more drive you can have in order to achieve uh, you know, top of the line. Remember, in our poor country, even a Chaiwala has become the Prime Minister of India. Abdul Kalam, who is the poorest of poor, uh, came from a very poor Muslim family, uh, became the spaceman of India, the missile man of India, the president of India, and with great humility, uh, served a lot of people. So young people, if you are a chartered accountant, you have started with something which is already so much plus. And uh, so the, the whole world is open to you. The more you do, the more you commit, the more you drive yourself, the more you persevere, uh, you can only do great. Luckily for you, this country is also growing with the GDP model more than 10% per annum. And uh, uh, the opportunities for the chartered accountants will continue to grow. And uh, this is how the world is and with the complexity of accounting, tax, regulatory, and international tax and other issues are there. Opportunities of uh, like IBC and other places, there are so many opportunities for a young chartered accountant to aspire towards uh, tax practice. I mean, I, 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 I think there are thousands of things that one can do. And if you can also get into industry, you can also get into the world of business, too many things to do. I mean, uh, I think the chartered accountants today are very lucky that they've actually become chartered accountants now and not yesterday when the opportunities were very few. So today, lots and lots of opportunities and I can only wish them the best. So one final question, Mr. Hiranandani, given that you told us about, uh, you know, the so many facets of your life and there's so many things that you do. If God gave you a privilege of an extra hour each day, what would we? What would you be? Uh, what would be? You, you would be. Uh, what would you? Uh, what would you do in that one hour? So, uh, one hour is sixty minutes. So, if I divide it into five, I would take up twelve more things to do. Uh, I think I would exercise to become fit. So, I would extend my exercise time by five minutes. I would uh, spend uh, five minutes on gratitude uh, to thank God and tell him that, uh, you know, you've given me this uh, uh, more time, one hour extra time for the purposes of living life. So I think 